What's up, guys? What's up? What's up? How's everybody doing tonight? Welcome, everybody, to the Caveman Aquatics live stream, the monthly Caveman Aquatic live stream. Glad to have you guys here. Quickly, I want to look at the chat. Give me some thumbs up and some good vibes and make sure that I look good and I sound good. Everybody give me the thumbs up real quick. I want to make sure that my tech is looking the way it's supposed to be. I see a lot of what's up and hi, Kevs. Thank you. I guess you guys can hear me. I hope it's looking good. All right. Good. I got the thumbs up. Now, here we go, guys. Tonight is going to be a lot of fun, and I'm going to tell you why. Why? I got a brand new software, guys. And look, I already I already forgot to do this. See? This is what happens when you're doing brand new software. I had it all set up, but I got a brand new software. We're going to stream to multiple platforms at the same time. We are streaming to YouTube, so I want to welcome my YouTube fam. I want to welcome my Facebook fam. I want to welcome my Facebook group fam. And I was going to also stream to IG today, but with the technical equipment, I didn't have enough tech going on. So I didn't want to like downplay the quality of this stream to have an extra camera going on. So the IG didn't happen, but that's okay. We got plenty of room right here for everybody else. So welcome everybody to the live stream. Um, like I said, bear with me. We're going to try some new things. Well, hopefully the software works and everything is the way it's supposed to happen. Um, either way, if things break or if they don't break, we're gonna have a fun time. We're gonna be it's gonna be entertaining either way. You could you could laugh at me or I'll laugh at myself. Who knows? We'll find out. So, welcome to everybody. Um, those of you watching the replay right now, I want to welcome everybody watching the replay. Also, make sure that you guys leave a comment, leave replay squad down in the comments below so that I can thank you later on for catching the replay, all right, guys? Not, not forgetting you replay, guys. Now, if you're here live with me right now, guys, I don't be shy. Let's get going. We're going to get cracking right now. So if you guys are here, say hi. Tell me where you're from. I'm about to shout you guys out right now, starting from the bottom. Let's go. So I see, check this out. This is a cool thing we're going to have right here. The sound is good. I appreciate that. Let's go. Live squad. I like that. Check it out. Richard Lewis says live squad. Check it out. I'm going to throw your comments up on the screen. So be ready for that, guys. I see Mexico is here. Mike from Mexico is in the house. Let's see. It's 3.30 a.m. in India. My man is in, from India, and he's here with us today. That's awesome. Let's see who's here. Troy is here. Troy from Norfolk, Virginia is in the house. Australia is in the house. Richard Fernandez from Australia. They got Fernandez's in Australia. That's awesome, bro. I love it. See who's here. I saw one right here. Queens, New York in the building. My boy, represent. All right. Queens is here. Let's go. Long Island is here. V-I-C, Long Island's in the house. Puerto Rico's here in the house. Alex Salgado's here from Puerto Rico. Jersey City's here. All right, guys, we got so many of you here. This is awesome. Let me see what else is here. California's here. Rube, Rube's M1, Vic, Victorville, California. That's dope. I love it. Let me go to the bottom. The Philippines is here, guys. Vin Hernandez from the Philippines is with us. All right, let's get rolling, guys. I love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you guys for being here and being on time. All right. We're going to, let's make sure I got everything copacetic here. Okay, guys, let me take that off. Does that work? Nope. See, I'm learning, guys, on the fly. Let me go back to this. I got to find that comment. Where is it? There it is. I got to look for the comment to take it off. Okay, I'm learning this thing as we go. General 51 with the $2 super chat to start it off. My man, General. Thank you, my bro. Does it say super chat? Yeah, it says $2 on there. Always in support. Always, General. My man, General, has always got that support. I wonder if this would show me. Nope. It's just going to pop up just like that. All right. Guess I got to find them like that. All right, guys. They're going to go right into the topic. So today's topic, we're going to talk about. Let me see if I can get that out of there. Nope. Got to find it and get it out of there. All right. Today's topic, we're going to talk about five things that you must know when keeping African cyclists, the five most important things. All right, guys. So we're going to start off right off. The bat, see we go here, forgot to mention the replay squad. Don't forget replay squad for you guys watching the replay. All right, top five things that we must know with African cyclists. First one we're going to talk about is aggression, guys. And one thing I didn't tell you already, guys, we got some dope views right here. Let's see, make sure all this stuff is working correctly. Yep, there we go. Stuff not working right. <laughs> all right. There it is. I'm going to hook you guys up. Eventually, I'm going to figure this all out. Let me get rid of this. Boom. 
African cichlid, guys. This is what we're talking today. See, I'm playing with the software at the same time as you. So, go back to the comments. All right, guys. Here we go. Number one, five things about African cichlids. We're going to talk about aggression to start off. African cichlids are aggressive fish. If you don't know that they're aggressive and you just buy some African cichlids, you're going to be in a big surprise when you get your tank and fill it with African cichlids. These guys are going to be chasing each other. You're not going to know what's going on. You're going to feel stressed out and you may not even enjoy your tank if you don't understand how to properly deal with their aggression. If you don't deal with their aggression, you're not going to enjoy your tank. Okay. And the reason why African cichlids are kept mostly with other African cichlids is because of their aggression, right? Because if you put an aggressive fish with a submissive fish or a fish that's just not as aggressive, what's going to happen is that submissive fish is going to get picked on all the time. It's not going to defend itself. It's going to always be in a submissive state. And eventually the stress levels on that fish is going to rise and that fish is going to end up dying. The aggressive fish will kill that submissive fish. Now, the reason why you keep Africans with Africans, if you got two aggressive fish that at least one is defending the, you know, they defend each other. When someone tries to be aggressive on them, they can handle the stress a little bit better. At least they can defend themselves. Yes, they are still going to run away at times, but you want to keep the aggressive fish with other aggressive fish. All right. That's number one. Let's go to number two. A big part of their aggression, guys is because in an African cichlid tank, there is a hierarchy. The hierarchy in an African cichlid tank is what determines which fish is your tank boss and which fish is beneath him, and then the next one and the next one, all the way down to the bottom of the totem pole. This is part of the reason for their aggression. The way that African cichlids multiply, the way that they reproduce and mate, the top tank boss, or I'm going to call it tank boss, but we're also talking about in the wild here, right? The top most dominant fish is the one that's going to attract the female. That's the one that's going to fertilize the female's eggs and then they reproduce. The female is not going to, going to want to choose a submissive fish that's at the bottom of the hierarchy. So that's also why these fish have such beautiful colors. Their colors come out because that's how they show their dominance. The most brightest, beautiful, strongest fish is going to be the one most likely your tank boss. So... Some of you that already have African cichlids might think, well, why is the most beautiful fish that I have in the tank, why is he such a bully? Great question, right? I wish if I was better at this, guys, I can switch this around really quickly. See what happens if I do this. It looks a little better. Okay, so it's not surprising, right, that the, the best looking fish in your whole tank is the one that's the butthead, the one that's chasing everybody around being a bully because He's so dominant, his colors are just shining through. That's that's just how African cichlids work, okay? So that's the hierarchy, how it works. These guys are going to establish every level of the hierarchy from the top to the bottom, and their aggression is what establishes where they are. That's why when you add new fish, right away, everyone starts making sure that they keep the level that they're on and that these new fish are in a level below them. That's part of the reason why it's tricky adding new fish, Okay? Number three, we're going to talk about one of the best ways to deal with the aggression. Notice we're still on aggression here, right, guys? One of the best ways to deal with aggression is overstocking your tank. Let me show you guys the whole tank. Overstocking your tank is what's going to be the number one thing that you can do to help curb aggression in an African cichlid tank. Why? It's not that it's going to make them any less aggressive. They're still going to be just as aggressive as they would. The thing is, with more fish in the tank, the aggression is not directed consistently on any one fish. Does that make sense? Let's do a switch right here. Does that make sense? Okay. Let me go back over here. Yep. So the aggression is mitigated because it's spread to everybody in the tank. If, if you have only three or four or five fish in the big tank, that bully is going to chase that one specific fish or maybe two specific fish all the time. And they're going to get the brunt of the stress. But if you've got an overstock tank, okay, he might chase this guy right now, but he can get away, hide somewhere else under a piece of decor, behind a rock or something. And then the bully will find somebody else that he might want to chase around. So then that stress will go to a separate fish. 
So it's just about mitigating the stress. So it spreads evenly to all the fish in the tank instead of staying on any one particular fish. That's why overstocking an African cichlid tank is very effective. Okay, let's go now to number four. Just like we talked about with the hierarchy, there's a reason why you don't want to mix males and females in your African cichlid tank. When you got females in the tank, the males are going to go nuts. They're going to want to be the one at the top of the hierarchy to mate with the female. So what are they going to do to be at the top? They're going to be bullies. They're going to be aggressive. They're going to chase people around. They're going to make sure that they reach the top. And But it won't just be the one fish. There'll be a few of them that'll be fighting for that top spot because they want the female. So something that I suggest, especially for beginners just starting out with an African cichlid tank, is to keep an all-male tank. Do not allow any females in your tank because it's just going to cause crazy drama. I don't mean anything by it, guys, but female African cichlids, I'm talking about fish here, guys, female African cichlids are going to cause crazy drama in the tank. So keep an all-male tank. Unless, of course, you are specifically wanting to breed African cichlids, in that case, you wouldn't do that in like your main tank. You would have a separate tank and you would you would want to have a ratio of about five females for every one male. That's how you breed African cichlids uh, successfully. Number five, most important thing when it comes to African cichlid, guys, I'm going to give you the show right here, are your water parameters. African cichlids, their water parameters are a bit different than your regular tropical you know, go to your go to your local aquarium store and pick up fish and just throw them in a the tank. Their water parameters are special and different, but it's not anything crazy. OK, the number one most important thing, in my opinion, is their pH levels. African cichlids come from the African rift lakes, which are very, very salted lakes. So they live in brackish water. Do they live in bracket that much brackish water when they're in the store in a tank? Maybe not. But. That doesn't change generations and generations of their genetics. So they still thrive in that high pH in that very brackish water. So what you want to do in your African cichlid tank is to make sure that your pH is high for them. Anywhere between, I say, 7.6 and about 8.4, 8.5, somewhere in that range, you'll be okay. And the way that you want to keep that pH high and elevated and stable so it doesn't fluctuate, the best way is to use natural sources like a aragonite sand in your tank, which is what I have for a substrate right there in that 210 gallon. Or you can use crushed coral also as a substrate. Or you can put crushed coral inside a mesh bag and put that bag inside your filter. And that would be the best way to keep the pH high and stable. Other methods are you could use uh, limestone. If you lose, if you use limestone decor in your tank, that also releases the same minerals that the aragonite sand does and the crushed coral. Those minerals that are being released into the water are what buffer your water, keep the water buffered so that your pH stays high and stable. The other water parameter specifically for African cichlids, very simple. They require a little bit higher temperature than normal. If you keep your regular tropical fish from the store at, say, like 75 African cichlids should be kept at around like 80, 81, somewhere around there. I say between 78, 82-ish, somewhere in that range, which is going to be a little warmer than regular fish that you get at your store. Those two water parameters are the are basically the big, huge difference when keeping an African cichlid tank. That's it, really. Besides that and everything else that I covered, you'll be good to go, Okay. So that's my top five things that you need to know when you're keeping African cichlids. Let's go into the comments now, guys. We're going to start the Q&A in a second. I know that's the, the fun part. I love the Q&A part, and I want to help as many people as I can. Before I do that, guys, let me tell you who is sponsoring this live stream. Before I do that, let me get rid of that thing. There it goes. You know who's sponsoring this live stream? It's me. All by myself. Caveman Aquatics. So give me a moment. To show you guys what I got going on, and then we're going to jump right into the Q&A part, all right? So first thing that I got for you guys, if you're having trouble with, that didn't work. Hmm. Let's see what's happening here. 
Give me a second, guys. See, I told you, I told you we we're gonna run into some technical difficulties. Let's see what's happening here. Okay, I had to do it manually. No problem. I'll do it manually. My little shortcut didn't work. Okay, learning on the fly. I told you. So, first thing I got for you guys is my crystal clear water ebook. If you're having problems getting clear water in your tank, there's many, many things that you could be doing wrong. There's many, many things that you could be not doing. Plenty of tips and advice in this ebook. I guarantee that when you get this ebook, your water quality would Im will improve. I guarantee it so much that you have 30 days to read that book. And if it didn't help you in any way, let me know. Money back guaranteed. Okay, check that ebook out. The link for that book. See, I had this set up. I had it set up. Where is it? Boom. The link for that ebook is in the description. Use the master link and you'll find everything that I'm about to talk about right now. All right. Next up, what I got for you is I wish this worked right, but it's not going to work. So I got to go manual. No problem. I got you manual. Boom. The next one I got for you is my full entire course on keeping African cichlids. We went through five of the, of the most important top five things that you need to know, but there's still a whole bunch more involved if you decide to go ahead and keep an African cichlid tank. This course is going to guide you from the very beginning, getting your tank, getting your filters, getting your equipment, all the way to adulthood of the fish. When they're grown and you got a nice tank and it's all full, this tank is going to take you from this course, excuse me, is going to take you from beginning to end. Check it out. Master link, same thing. That's where you're going to find it. Last but not least, guys, this is the very last one, I promise. And we're going to get into the Q&A. But again, I got to do it manually. Boom. Last one is the channel membership. We got a bunch of members here with us today. Um, the membership is the best way to show your support for the channel. Depending on what level that you get, you're going to get specific per perks for that level. And the best level, obviously, is the Tank Boss level where we do members-only live streams twice a month. And it's a nice small group of us. And we have a lot of fun twice a month. So check out the channel memberships. And let's get rolling. Here we go. Back to number one. Okay, guys. Q&A time. Let's go. Fun time. Let me put this back up here. All right. Here we go. Here we go. I'm starting from the bottom, guys. If I miss your question, I apologize. Did I, I, see, I see super stickers and super chats that are not being shown to me, guys. I apologize if I miss any of those. But I was hoping that the software was going to notify me when super chats come in. Like my man Raheem just threw a five dollar forty nine cent very specific super sticker. Thank you, my man Raheem. I appreciate you. But let me get to the bottom here. I'm gonna start from the bottom with the Q and A, guys. If I miss your question, I apologize. I'm gonna try to catch every single one of them and go in order. But you know, you guys know how it goes. We got a lot of people here tonight. I love it. That's awesome. Let's start with the questions. First one I see right from the bottom. Let's see. TBE Chop says, can you use cinder blocks or red bricks as caves? Hmm. I guess you can. I don't think cinder blocks and bricks leach anything. Just make sure you wash them really good. I don't see a problem with it, really. Should be fine. Should be fine. Rob Miller says, what do you think about ordering fish through the mail? That's how I get my fish, bro. I used to go to my local fish store all the time. They have variety. They have some good stuff, but not as much as like a specific African cichlid breeder and supplier. They're going to have a whole bunch of other options and about Petco and PetSmart. Let's not go there. Um, but that's how I order my fish all the time. I go to my suppliers, which you can find using the master link. I'm not even going to go get that thing anymore. Use the master link. Go to my shop. You can find the suppliers that I use that I order fish from online. And they ship it to you overnight and you get it the very next day. Works great. I love it. Guys, I have more surprises for you. Check this out. Didn't even show you this one yet. Did this lock? It did lock. Okay. We're back. Let's see how we look in here. Mm. Would be nice if it showed, right? Yeah, that would be nice if it showed, but it's not showing now. See, guys, I told you. We're going to have difficulties here. Oh, there it is. It's back. It's here. All right, let's go. 
There we go. Look at this, guys. I got everything here for you guys. Got multiple views. We're gonna we're gonna ask answer all these questions while you guys can check out the fish. If you wanna ask an American question, I got you right there. You wanna ask African cichlids? I'll throw that one up there. The quality will get better after a while being up there. Bear with me, guys. We're we're figuring it all out together today. Okay, that's the American tank. Let's go with that one. Let's go. What's next? I uh, answered that one. Bodega Wi-Fi. I love that name. That's a cool name. Bodega Wi-Fi says, do you have any caveman wife beaters for sale? I think I do. I'm not sure. It's been it's been a while. But go check out the master link below. See, I wish I had a way to just go boop, master link, boop. But anyway, check the master link. You'll see the caveman merch button. Go into the caveman merch store and see what I got. I think I do have some wife beaters. Might be wrong, though, but check it out. Go here. Does the size of your tank affect fish's health? It depends on the fish, uh, Stefan. Some fish do require a specific size of tank, like the Oscars that you're looking at right there. Those Oscars, one Oscar requires a minimum of 75 gallons. Two Oscars require a minimum of 125. So when you talk about Oscars, yes, the size does matter because if they're in a tank that's too small for them, they're going to feel confined and they're going to get stressed out. And they may, Oscars specifically get very dramatic. They may like lay in a corner somewhere and not want to swim around or anything. They might do that. So that's not surprising. African cichlids, on the other hand, right? African cichlids require a minimum of 55 gallons. Why? Because the 55 gallon is the first tank size that gives you 48 inches in length. And that's what they require. They require that left to right swimming space. So yes, depending on the fish, it does matter. Um, it does matter the tank size. Okay, guys. Did I lose where I was at? Okay, Stefan's here. And now I do see the super chat. The super chat is here. Does it work if I go like this? Why doesn't it show it there? Why wouldn't it pop up? Let me figure this out right here, guys. Let me take this one off. Stefan, I'm trying to find your... Okay, thanks, bro. Got you. Let me see if this works. Why That doesn't go on there, which is silly. It should absolutely go on there. But thank you, Faith Sykes, with the 999 Super Chat. Um, I appreciate you, Faith. Thank you very much. I have learned so much from you. Truly appreciate all you do. And I appreciate you, Faith, for appreciating my hard work, helping you guys out. Thank you for that support. I love it. Thank you very much. Uh, another member just came in. Why won't this throw it over there? I got to talk to these guys because there's a lot of improvement to make here on this software. This should be, once I click this, it should go right over there where I want to show you guys that. Tisk tisk. Okay, so Jay Hauser is a new member. Let's all welcome Jay Hauser to the membership. He just signed up. Thank you, Jay Hauser. I appreciate you. Let's see where I was. See, uh, no way for me to find where I was. So I'm just going to start from the bottom, guys. Oh, I'm going to start from right here, right after Faith. So bigger is better in the house. Welcome back, bro. Uh, bigger is better says, how long do Mbuna hold their fry in their mouth before stripping them? Um, you could strip them at any time, really. If if your fish is holding eggs, you could choose to strip them right away. Um, if the question is how long do Mbuna hold the fry in their mouth by themselves, they can go anywhere from like three weeks to a month holding the fry in their mouth. Um, but once you know that they are holding, you could go ahead and strip them Put them in a hospital tank whenever you're ready. All good. Uh, Yamil Ramirez. Yamili? Yamili. Yamile. Yamile. I got you. Yamile Ramirez says, my African cigars are small and they won't really eat. Um, they may be stressed out for some reason. Uh, when fish don't eat, it's very typical that something is stressing them out. Could be your water parameters might not be right. Um, could be other fish in the tank are bullying them. Could be that maybe they're new to you and they're just not having got accustomed to the their new environment. So if they're brand new to you, just give them some time and maybe they will eat. Or you could also maybe try changing the food up. Maybe the food that they're eating, they don't like it. Might want to try something else. That might be it. But there's many reasons why a fish won't eat. Um, for me to help you better, I need to like know all the details going on in your tank. Uh, Tracy says, I just found a fish holding... Has anyone ever had success letting them hatch their own fry? Yeah, absolutely. Um, 
but it depends how many other fish you have in the tank because if they spit them out themselves and there's and there's a lot of other big fish in the tank they're gonna get eaten so what you might want to do if you don't want to strip the fish you could just remove that fish that's holding into a hospital tank or quarantine tank and let the fish spit the spit the fry out on her own and then when the fish spits the fry out then you remove the mom from that tank because the the mom will also eventually eat those fry so remove the mom from the tank leave the fry in the fry tank now and you can grow them from there my man john from los angeles sickness is here about 25 28 days there you can just answer the question uh kyle says where do i purchase my fish go to the master link and check out my shop navigate to where it says fish and i have three or four online suppliers that i use discount codes are there as well check it out master link is in the description by the way uh nails b lohaley says do i need to use a separate quarantine tank for my fish for my first batch of fish uh, i recently set up my 75 gallon tank and i have no fish right now do you need to separate for the first batch of fish no okay i got you no if you if you set up you just set up your 75 gallon with no fish and you're getting a first batch of fish then your 75 gallon is essentially your quarantine tank right because the reason why you want to quarantine fish is because you already have known healthy fish right that's what we we all assume our fish are healthy in our main tank and you don't want to enter in any potential disease or parasite from new fish so you don't want to bring that into your healthy fish but when you have a brand new tank the whole tank is essentially a quarantine tank you don't know what anybody has so it's okay to put them all in the tank right away um you you got to make sure you add them all specifically you don't want to just add like 20 fish in one shot that might not work um you might want to add them sparingly but it's okay to add them all into the main tank you don't have to quarantine them separately i understand the question good question I think we got another member. Nope, that's still Jay Hauser. It's still up there. Okay. Uh, Jim M says, looks like they're starting to ban fish meds. They just took API Furion 2 off the market. Where? In the U.S.? If they took that off the market in the U.S., you might be right. Maybe, they are, maybe they're Maybe they going to start banning fish meds. And the reason why, from what I hear, is that some people use fish meds to make illegal substances. So that's why they're starting to ban. That's why they're banned in other countries. They start to ban them here in the U.S. Uh, we all might be in some trouble. Um, Mohammed Saleman says, sorry, my question about guppy. Can guppy fish live in dark water? I'm not really sure, bro. I'm not too experienced with guppies at all. Uh, maybe somebody else in the chat right here has some experience with guppies and they might be able to help you out. Hopefully. Why don't you have any predator haps? I do have predator haps, Michael. They're in there. Let me zoom in a little bit. There's a predator hap right there, that giraffe hap. That Venustus is a predator hap. I have a bunch of them in there. Uh, Natural Aquarium says, at Matt Perez. For me, it depends on the size and how long. Okay, he's answering Matt Perez. Make it anywhere from a proper burial to a flush. Oh, I, don't, I missed that question. <laughs> I don't know what you guys are talking about, but okay uh what happened okay i got to the bottom and it jumped i guess it happens over here too let me scroll back up a little bit all right i see where i was at michael hayes says awesome channel bro thank you michael i appreciate that uh stretch money says are you ever going to get into breeding your studs maybe possibly we never know what the future holds um who knows i may i may get the itch and decide to start breeding just you know make some new content i can't i'm not gonna say no i'm not gonna say yes but who knows it's definitely the option is open to that option absolutely uh patrick says always remember to smash the like button guys if you're not smashing that like button you might be wrong so smash away guys smash away uh let's go back here Kansas City is in the house. Welcome, John. Can I add a green terror with peacocks? I have seen it done, Thomas. But technically, the answer is no. Because a green terror is an American cichlid, which has requires different water parameters than, your, than peacocks, which are African cichlids. So technically, the answer is no. But I have seen it successfully done. So I'm not going to tell you 
eh, you can't do it because many have. Um, but my answer is technically you shouldn't. That's my answer. <laughs> okay, big shout out from Blackpool, UK. Do you know of any USA suppliers that send cichlids over to UK? Stefan, bro, I get this question so much all the time. And unfortunately, I do not. All my suppliers only ship in the in the US. And I've looked for some suppliers and it's very difficult to find any. If anybody knows in the chat, please help my, help my man Stefan out. Help him out. Jay Hauser says, I sent you an email with a Corey, with Corey John and Jason too. With Corey John. I saw it, Jay Hauser. I saw the email. It was like this long, right? Right, Jay Hauser? I saw the email. I appreciate the email. Um, I just haven't had a chance to respond to it because I want to give you a proper response. But thank you for that email. Uh, Marcus Pitcher says, how many Mbunas can I put in a 75-gallon tank before it gets to be too much? I had a total of 30 adult peacock and haps in a 75-gallon tank. It was overstocked, so I did have to overfiltrate. Mbuna are smaller, so you can get away with 35 to 40, something like that. But your tank will be overstocked, so you will have to overfiltrate. Raheem is in the house. Toronto's in the house. Let's go. Raheem is here. Welcome, brother Raheem. Tactical Jackalope. Welcome, my man. You said you would be here and you showed up. Nice. We know you like cichlids, but what other fish do you like? Besides cichlids, I like arowanas. If you could check, you see my man in the top left corner right there? That's my man Flaco Dos. I love him. Um, I love my clown loaches. Those aren't cichlids. And I love my plecos. They're in there too somewhere. Can't name any more off the top of my head, Tactical Jackalope. Los Angeles Cichlids, my man John, dropping the, the link to become a member. I like it. I like it a lot. Mimi says, put them in a tumbler if they still have the yolk on them. That's the question for the fry. Yes, when if you strip the fry, putting them in a tumbler is absolutely the best thing to do. Kane77 says, in a 125, I have African Cichlid Peacocks. Can I put a sailfin pleco in with pH about 8.0? I don't know specifically what a sailfin pleco is, so I don't want to give you bad information. But usually, plecos do fine with African cichlids. With that being said, do a little bit more research on that specific pleco. Sorry, I couldn't help you any more than that. Joseph Tremonte is here. This is Joseph. <laughs> Thanks, Joseph. I got out of the hospital. I'm home now, and I'm on auction. I already said, said it before, but I don't know if anybody heard or he heard, but I love watching your show. Thank you, Joseph. Glad to hear that you're home and out of the hospital and doing better. Thank you for being here. I appreciate you, Joseph. Jen says, hey, Kev, uh, have you ever kept an electric blue Akara in a community tank? Um, no, I haven't. If the question is, can you do it? Maybe, possibly. It really depends on what kind of community you got going on. Um, but I, I prefer to keep my cichlids with cichlids. But it's possible. I'm sure someone out there has done it, and there's not really a problem with it. Natural Aquarium says, I'm not too into cichlids outside of my Altum Angels and my Epistos. You know stuff I can do with plants, but I do dig your African tanks. Um, I'm not really the plant guy, if you can tell, right? I don't have a lot of... These two little plants that are in here are fake. So I really don't go... I don't like to have planted tanks just because... I started with African cichlids and they all just destroyed all of my plants. So I got tired of taking dead plants out of the tank. Um, and then when I got my American tank, I just decided like not to go with it. The fake ones look fine with, for me. So I can't really help you with the with plants, bro. I'm sorry about that. Mohammed is from Egypt. Sorry, my question about guppies. Got that one already, Mohammed. If I have an FX6 on my 175 gallon, should I put my FX5 on it as well? It depends what kind of fish you got in there, Augustine, and how many you got in there. If you got like one Oscar in there, one FX6 will be fine. If you got an overstocked tank, you might need two FX6s. So, you know, it depends on what you're stocking in there. But usually, I mean, usually, normally, just giving you a general answer for a 175, it's a big tank. I'm sure you're going to put fish in there. I would go with, yeah, you could either put another FX5 or just double up the FX6 and be done with it. 
you know you're probably going to get another tank in the future or more fish in the future or the fish you have are going to grow and get bigger, just go for the FX6. Knock it out of there. My man Patrick answering Marcus Pitcher. He's got 33 in Buna in the 75. There you go. Perfect. Victor says, I want to start an Arowana tank. What other fish can I put with it? Everything that I got going on in my American tank. You could put all those guys in there with an Arowana. You just got to be careful of your size ratio because an Arowana will eat small fish. And if your Arowana is too small and you got some big monsters in there, they could eat the Arowana. So you got to just be careful with your sizes. But um, Oscars do very well with Arowana. Stingrays do very well with Arowana. Um, Severums do well with Arowana. I mean, you got your choice of American cichlids that can mix very well with Arowanas. Ah, so I got to scroll up to see a $5 super chat from Tactical Jackalope, my man Tactical. Thank you, bro. How many Tiger Barbs can safely cram into a 29 gallon? Um, Tiger Barbs, it could be a bunch of them, bro. I really can't give you a number because they're small. Um, in a 29 gallon, it's hard for me to just throw out a number. It, you got to kind of just go by eye. It doesn't really matter if you have only two. They're not like African cichlids. They're not going to kill each other if you only have two. And if you end up having, you know, 10 or 20, that doesn't really matter either. What, what's going to matter is that if you have a lot of them, you got to have the proper filtration with them. So you got to filter your tank according to how many fish you got. That's really the, the important part. Ali says, what is the best medication for a fish who's been bullied and has sunken belly? He's barely eating in a hospital tank using salt and paragon. There you go. Aquarium salt. And Paragard are two great options to use for both of them. Aquarium salt can help uh, heal heal damaged fins, recover from getting beat up. And Paragard is going to help with your sunken belly, with your internal parasites, and also help in the regrowth of fins as well. So those are two great options. One other option, if you, if you do have access to it for the sunken belly, if it is internal parasites, is uh, Metroplex. Or the actual medication that's in there is uh, Metronidazole. Metro attacks the parasite, uh, I forget what it's called, heterosema, heterosema, something like that, forgetting the name of it right off the top of my head, but Metro is the best one for internal parasites causing sunken belly. But the two you're using currently are great options as well. Raheem is back. What up, my man? Bigger is better, all right? Mike says, I have an FX4 running in a 55-gallon cichlid tank. Is Purigen and Chemi Blue okay? Are they okay? They're awesome. They're both awesome products. They both do great work. They're both going to help you uh, get clarity out of your tank. What I have found out recently is that you don't need both of them. Either or is going to work just as good as both of them together. So really pick one that you prefer and you're still going to get great results from either one. Got a 999 super chat from Marcus Pitcher, a super sticker. Thank you, Marcus. I appreciate you, bro. I really wish that I could throw this up right here. I don't know. Like, I got to go look for it. Is that how this works? Yeah, see, I got I to gotta scroll down and look for it so I could throw your super sticker up there, which then throws my spot away from the chat. Now I'm lost. I don't know where it went. Oh, well, guess I'll start from here. Let's see. David says, Ragonite Sand and Crush Coral. I guess he's a a answering somebody's question. Terry's here. Thanks for the invite. My pleasure, Terry. Thanks for coming. Uh, love your viz. Your thoughts on Hillstream Loach with Peacocks? Um, I don't think so. I think Peacocks might stress stress that loach out and might eventually end up killing it. Um, so be careful with that. I see some more. Super Chats are coming in. 999 from Chris Vesey. And I wish I could find it. I'm going to find it. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go find it because... Your super chat deserves to be read by everyone. My man, Chris, with the 99. I have a 10-inch tire track eel, cool, and have been feeding him night crawlers, worms, twice a day, one worm each feeding. I want him to grow fast. Will this will this be suffice? Also, my pleco gets a lighter pattern. Why? Unfortunately, Chris, I've never kept eels, so I don't have much information on eels. But it sounds like if you're feeding him, what would you say, twice a night? Twice a day. 
Twice a day seems like it's pretty good. Um, keep on with that track and see if he's growing. If he is, stick to that same level. If you feel like he's growing pretty slow, up it a notch. That's the most, the best I could tell you. Fortunately, I never kept the eel, but that sounds like a really cool fish, man. Very nice. $20 came in from Daniela. Let me go get Daniela. Thank you very much, Daniela. I really appreciate that 20 bucks. Just because I love you and you're the best aquarium advisor around. Thank you, Daniela. I appreciate you. Appreciate you very much. KG is here. KG says, what's your take on Embunas in a 30-gallon? Too small, bro. For African cichlids, you want a minimum of 55 gallons because they need that left to right 48-inch swimming space to feel to not feel stressed. They need that swimming space. So 55 gallon is your go-to minimum. Patrick is answering Roman. There's a complete list of vetted and supported online suppliers in the master link below. You're absolutely right. Let me change this up, guys. I got so, I had so much stuff here, and I'm not using any of it. Try to make this a little cooler looking. Let's try that for a while. All right. Back to the comments. Where was I? I don't know. This thing just throws me around. There I am. JJS official says, Kev, you ever get stoned? <laughs> you ever get stoned and stare at your cichlids? My favorite hobby. Um, I have not done that yet, my man, but I'm not against it at all. Great question. Great question, my man. Uh, Luke says, let me scroll up here. Did I get this one? Yes. Luke says, it is, is it normal for cichlids to flash on the substrate now and again? Yeah, it's normal. Um, especially like after a water change, you know, maybe your temperature's off a little bit, maybe the pH kind of moved a little bit, so they might be a little bit irritated. So it's normal for them to flash. Where you're gonna get concerned is when there's excessive flashing, right? From from multiple fish. If multiple fish are excessively flashing, then you got a problem in your water and you need to do something about it. But once in a while, here and there, one fish or two fish, yeah, not a problem. Don't worry about it. They just got an itch. They're just scratching it. When to change biomedia, Alberto, uh, Alberto asks. The answer is almost never. Never. You don't want to ever change your biomedia because that's where your beneficial bacteria grow on the most. Your beneficial bacteria grow on all your surfaces in your tank, but the majority of them are in your biomedia. So you want to preserve them alive on that biomedia. If and when you do decide to clean your filters and you want to clean your biomedia, you want to clean them in your tank water, just dunk them in a bucket of tank water, mix it around a little bit, not much at all, and put it back. Don't mess with it too much because you don't want to kill that bacteria on the biomedia. So never change it. Somebody else like JJ's comment? <laughs> uh, let's see. Tejas. Tejas says, hey, cave man. What's up, Tejas? I'm setting up a six-foot Malawi cichlid tank. Cool. Setting up a black vinyl background. Cool. Need suggestions for substrates. Thanks in advance. Bunch of them. Seachem makes an awesome African cichlid substrate, which comes in aragonite. Um, Carib Sea makes an awesome aragonite sand as well. You could get crushed coral as your substrate that come in different colors. There are plenty of options, my man. And I have a few of the options that I've used in my shop. Check out the link in the description. Go to Substrate. You'll see the substrates there. Check it out, Tejas. Congrats on that new setup, by the way. Uh, Alberto. I think I got that one. Yep. Marcus Pitcher says, I have two Cascade 1000 canister filters and a sponge filter for a 75-gallon tank. Okay, that sounds good. On my 75 gallon, and I have 20 in bonus current. Do you think that is enough filtration? Absolutely. Excuse me. Two two big, huge canister filters and a sponge filter. Yeah, you're good, bro. Good to go. Uh, where'd it go? No, go back. Two dollars. General says you forgot somebody's super chat. Scroll back for her. Thank you, General. Let me go back up. I got Daniela. Face Sykes, 4.99. Do you still have flavor? Flav. Faith, unfortunately, I do not. Let me change this view. Let me get serious here with you guys for a second. Huh? See, if I knew where to go specifically, this would be better. So, Flav, unfortunately, passed just recently, Faith. Um, I made a post about it 
on Facebook and Instagram. He fought for a very, very long time. He had some kind of parasite that was just unbeatable. I tried everything. At the very last, my very last attempt, I actually found some medicated flakes that specifically target three different types of internal parasites. And he actually was beginning to eat those flakes. Let me get my hands off the table. He was actually beginning to eat those flakes. And I thought that it was about to turn for the better. And then, unfortunately, he passed. So he's not with us anymore. It was a tough loss. Um, he's in a better place now. Instead of struggling and trying to survive, he's doing well somewhere else. But thank you for asking, Faith. And I appreciate that $4.99. Thank you. Let's go... And thank you, General 51, for reminding me about that question. Let me scroll back down. Let me see what I missed because this thing is just jumping around. Thank you, General. Assad. Assad says, my flower head, flower horn, and cichlids chill at the bottom lately. They don't swim much. They tend to hide. I just had it installed. Your flower head and cichlids? I don't really understand the question. You just had it installed, the tank? Um, if you just had the tank installed and you just got brand new fish, that's okay because, you know, maybe they're not used to the tank yet. You got to give them some time to adjust to you, to the environment, to the tank. So give it some time if you just got the tank installed. I think that's what you mean. I think that's what you're saying. ATB is in the house, my man. Adam, can you install a tank on the black table? Yes, I can, bro. It's just a matter of time. Give me some time and we'll have an awesome tank and then I'll... Might even uh, record some new content at the Black Table, too. Thank you for the comment, my man. My man, Adam, from the Black Table. See where we're at. What's my favorite African cichlid? So this, now, I got a little choppy, guys. I don't know if you guys see that. So I'm going to take this off. Let me take that off and go back to you guys watching some fish. Comment was... What's your favorite African cichlid? I don't have a favorite, bro, because I love my guys too much. I love all of them equally, just like my children. I can never pick a favorite. They're all beautiful, and I love them all. Look at my face. They're all beautiful, and I love them all. Can't pick no favorites. Sorry, bro. <laughs> um, TBE Chop says, I have a 300-gallon Rubbermaid stock pond. Nice, bro. Uh, with five turtles and two nine-inch Oscars. Can I add African cichlids to that community? Again, technically, you're not supposed to have Oscars with African cichlids because their water parameters are different and their temperaments are different. But like I said earlier, I have seen it done successfully. There's plenty of people that do mix them. And I have a whole entire video on how my man... Gordo right there, my blood parrot at the bottom of the tank there, is in with the African cichlids. There's a reason how he got there. It's not like I had a whole tank of African cichlids and just said, hey, let me just throw a blood parrot in there and see what happens. You know, so every situation is a little bit different. Sometimes it works in some tanks and sometimes it doesn't in other tanks. That's the best that I could tell you. So I won't say it doesn't hurt to try it. If you want to try it, that might work. Oh, I lost the camera, guys. Well, I lost the American tank. Let me see if I can get it back real quick. I don't know what happened there. I'm coming back. Stand by, guys. These are the these are the technical difficulties that I told you guys that would happen. I knew it was going to happen. But I'm going to get us back in there real quick. Move that. Change the camera. One second, guys. Bear with me. This is me adjusting stuff on the fly. I don't know why it just died. Can you guys see me adjusting this camera on the fly? Unbelievable. Enter the studio. Okay, I think we're back. Let's see. See if it worked. Okay, we're back. Let me just adjust it. See, I lost it for a second. You know what? Maybe it got mad that I wasn't showing the I wasn't showing it enough. So I said, let me just shut off and cause a big headache for Kev. All right, I got you back, though. Let's check out the Americans for a while. See where we were at. Uh, wait, is the biometer you are referring to hang on back carbon pads? Nah, bro. 
Your carbon pads are not biomedia. Carbon pads are carbon, and carbon um, gets fully absorbed, and then you got to throw it away and replace the carbon. That's not your biomedia. Biomedia are either your ceramic rings, uh, matrix can be biomedia. Um, I use pot scrubbers in my canister can be biomedia. Biomedia is like a some kind of hard material or plastic material in my case that your beneficial bacteria grow on. I highly suggest that you check out my playlist on my beginners playlist. That's going to have a bunch of information on beneficial bacteria and get you caught up to speed with a question like that. I know you're new to the hobby. Don't worry. You're in the right place. But that playlist, don't go now. Don't go yet. Stay right here with me. But <laughs> that is that playlist is what's going to uh, definitely help you out. So check out that playlist. I got a super chat. Let me see what it says. I can't find it. I guess it's here. There it is. Jay Howard says, really looking to create a community South American cichlid tank. What are the most chill dwarf cichlids for a community tank? Bro, there's a lot of them. When you're talking about South American cichlids, a lot of them are mostly chill. Severums are super chill. Um, Geos, geophagus are, are super chill. Believe it or not, my green terrors are chill. My acaras are chill. <laughs> I mean, with South Americans, you don't really have to worry about aggression too much. Um, with most of them, with most of them, I'll say. But you got plethora of choices, bro. Thank you for that five dollar super chat, by the way. Appreciate you, my man. Let's see where I was at. I wish I could go back to where I was, but I can't, of course. Da, da, da. Let me see if I saw this. Okay, let's start from here. What's up, Kev? Headed to Brooklyn, down the LIE. Be listening to you all the way out. All right, my man is in. My man is in New York. I know all about the LIE. Let me see what time is it. Uh, you might still be in a little bit of traffic, but not as bad as when I was on the LIE earlier today. But I appreciate you, bro. Thank you for listening, Hugo. Uh, my man Mark says, any tips for super shy and Buna cichlids? They're about two inches and always hide. Not high foot traffic location. I'm thinking of cutting food way back to get them to come out. Any thoughts? Um, that might work, cutting the food back, but... In Boonas, especially new in Boonas, my man Patrick, I'm sure, probably answered your question before me. But they tend to be shy. They tend to hide because they are rock dwellers by nature. So they like hiding between the rocks and not being out in the open. Unlike peacocks and haps. Peacocks and haps prefer to be out in the open waters. So that's not out, out of the ordinary within Boonas. Um, but I'm sure that if you do cut their food back, when you do go to feed them, they'll all come out to eat naturally, but then they might even go right back into their hiding spots. It's just a common thing with Mbuna. Give them time, be patient with the mark, and eventually they may feel more comfortable when you come around the tank, and then they'll come out and swim around more. Assad says, yes. Thank you, Assad. Team 4KV, I'm about to start, I'm about to start my African cichlid tank. Congrats, my man. And I just have 55 gallons. That's good. What set of cichlids should I get and how many each? That's a that's a loaded, loaded question, bro, because the options are humongous. Uh, I prefer to start with peacock and hap mix. Like I just explained, the embunas are going to kind of be really shy at first, and embunas tend to be a bit more aggressive than peacocks and haps. So I would start with those. As far as what species to get, I mean, really, you could you can go with any species because there's no one species where every single fish of that species is going to be a nice guy or every single fish of that species is going to be a bully, right? You're going to get a bully. Let's talk about a dragon blood, right? You could get a bully dragon blood that's a complete insane psycho or you could get a really cool, really chill dragon blood. You just never know. So focus on... Mixing peacocks and haps first, stick to those two genres, genres, those two genuses, and then go with whatever species you like. But I do advise that you don't double up on any species. When you double up, when you have two of the same species or more, those guys are going to be at each other's throats more than anybody else. So try to have one of each species of peacock and hap. Go with that. Also, if you want to try out my African Cyclic course, that course is there. Check the master link in the bottom. That's going to give you a bunch of information, including 
what type of fish to start with. More details there. And if my buttons were working right, which they're not anymore, I would have been able to just, oh, oh, you decided to work. Look at that, guys. Oh, hold on a second. Did this all of a sudden? Oh, what's going on? I guess it works when it wants to, guys. I see. That's the trick, right? It works when it wants to. It doesn't work when I want it to work. <laughs> anyway, let's go back here. Good to know that at least it works. Okay, cool. So, Asad says, thank you. Thank you, Asad. Daniela says, Flavor Flav. I know he's enjoying heaven. Yes, he is. Thank you, Daniela. I appreciate that. Uh, my man dropping the merch link. Nice. Kev, is it normal for a mixed African cichlid tank to have little... Little to no aggression. Congratulations if you have that. <laughs> I can't seem to find who the tank boss is. They're mixed adults and juvies. Bro, you're you're overthinking uh, a problem that you don't have. Don't worry about who the tank boss is. If you have little to no aggression, just be thankful. <laughs> it's, it's not normal to tell you the truth, but if you got that going on, be thankful, bro. Congratulations on that. Um, Assad says my flower head fish has white spots above his eye. How can I cure it? Um, white spots can be a few different things. It could be ick, could be some kind of uh, fungus or bacteria growing on them. You may want to absolutely separate your fish and try something general right off the bat because if you don't know what it is, go with something general like API general cure. That might work right off the bat. Start with that. See how it goes from there. Thank you, Faith. I appreciate it. Everybody, everybody heard me about Flavor Flav, so thank you, Faith, for that. Let them catch up to ATB, please. Thank you. Oh, at ATB. My man John's calling you out, Adam. Stop spamming. <laughs> uh, I thought Gordo was your favorite. Uh, he's one of my favorites, bro. One of my favorites. I have many favorites. They're all my favorites. Let's see if I put this back here, guys. Let's see what happens here. See if it rolls, if it rolls smooth. So, David, oh, I see Assad raise the temperature in your tank gradually and add aquarium salt if your fish are tolerable to it. Yeah, that's definitely going to help as well. I mentioned earlier aquarium salt does help. Uh, it's a gr Aquarium salt is a great non-medication, kind of attacks a lot of things. Um, so that will definitely help. Ali says, thank you so much for answering my question. My pleasure, Ali. Uh, do I use Metroplex along with Paragard or instead of it for sunken belly? I would I would go with the Metroplex alone first. Start with the Metroplex because the Metroplex is going to directly attack that internal parasite if that is what it is. So start with that first because you don't want to over medicate by combining different medications. So uh, or instead of sunken belly. Also, did you find those medicated flakes? Um, also, there or uh, where did you find those medicated flakes? I don't remember the exact name of a website. I had to search and search and search. And I actually had a long conversation about this with um, my members only group, my members only group, just the other day. That I was waiting to see how well Flavor Flay did on those flakes, and if he recovered off of those flakes. Obviously, I was going to let all you guys know about it. I was going to do an entire video on these flakes. Um, unfortunately, he passed before I could get the results from those flakes. So I actually just, I don't even remember where I got them from. And I really can't, I really can't suggest that you use them because I don't really know if they work or not. I don't even really know if maybe they caused something to happen. I don't know. I'm not going to blame the flakes, but don't really want to suggest that you guys go looking for those just off the bat. Um, I see a 499 from Michael Aquatic Action. Thank you, my man. Is that... That's probably a super sticker because I don't see anything written with it. Thank you, Michael, for the four ninety nine. I appreciate you, bro. Uh, let's see where we were at. I just answered Ali. Thank you, David. Love Goldo. Faith loves Goldo. So do I. How much should I raise the temp to? You could raise it to the high 80s, Asad. Try 86, 87, 88, somewhere around there. But make sure you raise it gradually. Don't just all in one shot go all the way up to a new temperature Get there slowly and gradually, and then leave it there for a while. 
Uh, can you tell me what medicated flake? Oh, I think I just, I answered that for somebody else. Um, I don't remember the name, Faith. Uh, if I did, it's some kind of angel flake, and I don't remember the website where it was at. But uh, you know what? We're live, and I'm going to grab it because it's the second question, so I'm going to grab it so I can tell you what it's called. Here we go, guys. On the fly, live. Well, this is it. Let me show you guys. Let me show you guys. Let me go here. Let me go here. This is the... That's the medicated flake. And they come three different bags. So you see this one is deworming number two. This one is for... I cannot read this. And I'm going to show you why. It's absolutely tiny. Check it out. I know it's not just the glare. And yes, my eyes are bad, guys. But they're not that bad. I cannot read this anything on this label. Now, this little barcode would be awesome, right? You use your phone and you hit that barcode. It would be awesome if it worked, but it doesn't work. It leads you to a 404 error page, so that no good. Um, and I can't tell you, I don't remember which one number two attacked, but there's three of them. Each one attacks a different parasite. I started with number three, which I can tell you number three was Levamisole. It had Levamisole in the flakes. Number one, I believe, has like the regular uh, metronidazole. Don't remember what number two is. Number two might be the Prozzi, the Prozzi Pro type medication. But here's the other issue, guys. I'm showing you the bo the bag, but it just says deworming flake. The name of the company. Oh, there it is. Let me adjust my eyes for a second, guys. Angels Plus, I think it is. So check out Angels Plus. You could go to their website. It's right here, guys. It's super tiny. This is this is not the best label for a product, but it's right there. It says Angel Plus. Check out the website if you're really, really interested in getting these medicated flakes. The reason why I decided to try flakes because Flav wasn't eating any pellets. Medicated or not, he wasn't eating any pellets. I tried medicating the tank water, and that wasn't helping him either. So I decided maybe he might eat some flakes, which he actually did start to eat these. But then... He didn't stick around long enough for me to definitively say that these uh, are something that everybody should try. But try it at your own risk. If you're looking for some flakes, try those out. Tell them that caveman sent you over there because my man at customer support wasn't all too friendly. I'll leave it at that. Okay, let's keep going. David is here. David says Assad. He's asking Assad a question. Okay. Natural Aquarium says, on the fly guy, and is back. Okay, I must be really behind. Let me see. I just got a super chat, so I'm going to catch up to that super chat. Let me see where it is. I see you, Jonathan. Jonathan says, nine ninety nine, my man. Jonathan, thank you so much, bro. I appreciate you. Kev, I got a three-week-old tank, brand-new tank, okay, 29-gallon with 16 to 17, 2 to 3-inch peacocks, middle of my cycle, all proper equipment, I use Seachem Prime daily and stability, and I keep getting the same high nitrites. Any idea? Your tank is cycling, bro. You have absolutely no problem going on. You have nothing to worry about. If you're having high nitrites, that's actually good. That means that your ammonia has now converted into nitrites. Now you just got to wait for the other type of bacteria that need to grow to consume the nitrites. And then eventually it will... Uh, turn into nitrates. So you're on the right path. Continue with your prime and your and your stability daily. Don't do any water changes until those nitrites change into about 40 parts per million of nitrate. When you get there, that's when you want to do your first water change. So you're on the right path, Jonathan. Stick with it. Thank you for that 999, bro. Appreciate you. I'll start from right here. This is how I got to do it, guys, with this software. So uh, Jovain says, I had Oscars with African cichlids before. Like I said, there you go. Um, it has been done many times. Some people do it. Some people have Oscars with their African cichlids. Some people don't. It's all a matter of choice. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't, guys. That's how we're rolling. What's back there? Really? That's back there? Let me change that. Let me go back to this view. All right, let's keep it rolling. 
I'm getting the hang of the software, guys. I'm starting little by little. I'm getting the hang of it. So don't worry. If we do more of these live streams more often, I'm a quick learner, guys. If you haven't noticed, I learn things quickly. So this is my first time. I'm glad you guys are bearing with me through all these technical things. But eventually, the streams will get much more fluid, much more better. I'll have equipment that doesn't just turn off on me all of a sudden. Don't worry. We'll get there, guys. Together, we'll get there. Uh, David... Cochran says, Marcus, aquarium salt should not affect your pH levels. That's very true. David is correct. Griffin says, what's the best way to feed clown loaches? Mine are having trouble getting food and keep dying. First, you want to make sure that they're dying because they're not getting food. They might be dying for other reasons. There's multiple other reasons why they could be dying. But if you are sure that they're not getting food, you might want to try feeding your pellets on one side of the tank so that your other fish get your, get those pellets. And then at the same time, feed pellets again on the other side of the tank. That might at least separate the food so that your clown loaches can find the food somewhere else before all the other fish get it. I know my African cichlids, they're, they're pigs too, and they love to just go run and chase food and don't allow anybody else to get any food. But... It's hard. Try try maybe even sprinkling the food across the entire top instead of like dunking it all in at one shot. Try sprinkling sprinkling the food across the surface so that it, it drops to the bottom, spread out in the tank, and maybe the clown loaches will get it that way. You might want to try some veggie wafers at night. If you add some wafers at night that will sink to the bottom, um, they might get a chance to grab some of that too. A few things to try. Jovain says, took them out eventually because they're very dirty fish. I don't know which fish you're talking about. I must have missed it. I'm sorry. Uh, my angel fish just laid eggs in community tank. What should I do? I'm not sure how to care for angel fish eggs. I'm not a big angel fish expert because I don't keep them. Um, hopefully somebody else can help you out in the chat. Sorry, we. Patrick helping somebody out. Says the master link is is complete list of vetter and supported online retailers with discount codes. Absolutely, Gialina. Gialina says, "Do I see these are all YouTube comments? No Facebook comments. I wonder if I'm even live on Facebook. If anybody's on Facebook, leave a comment because these are all YouTube comments. Okay, we'll figure that out later. I mixed Metafix, I think you mean Melafix and Pimafix, in fish food." With the vitamins, and he's been doing much better. Plus, I've been treating the water too. I feed him eggs mixed with peas. Eggs mixed with peas and garlic? Okay. Um, I've never fed my fish eggs, so I really don't know anything about that. Um, Melafix and Pimafix, you usually don't want to feed them that. Those are medications that go in the tank water, so you don't have to mix that with food. They don't need to eat that medication. That medic, th those things are absorbed through the skin and through the gills, not in their stomachs. But if you say your guys are doing better, um, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Doing it live. That's right. Uh, somebody joined the club. Welcome to the club, Jose. Jim Gray with the $5. Let me go to Jim Gray. Let me find you, Jim Gray. Jim Gray with the $5 super chat. What do you think about medicating new fish when you first get them? If you do medicate, what do you use? Very good, good question, Jim. And it's a pretty long answer. So it depends on a few things. If I'm getting my fish from a trusted source, well, let me back up. If I'm getting one or two or three fish and I'm getting them, excuse me, of course, an alarm goes off. If I'm getting them from a trusted source, that I know always have quality fish. I'm still going to quarantine those fish, but I'm not going to automatically medicate them. I'm going to keep a close eye on them, make sure everything is good, uh, but I won't automatically medicate them. What was your question? You think about medicating new fish and you get them. Okay, that was a question. Now, if I get, let's say, you know, a batch of 10 or 15 or 20 juvenile fish, even from my trusted source, I'm going to I'm going to quarantine them, but those guys I may automatically medicate just because the potential for some kind of disease in 15 or 20 fish is higher, right? The odds are higher. So for that, 
I will automatically medicate. And you, you said, what would you use? I would use something very general and light, like general cure. I would me- automatic auto medicate with general cure. You only really need um, two doses, 48 hours in between, and that should be fine. If you can't get a hold of general cure, you might be in a country that it's illegal or is not available. The other option I would use is aquarium salt. You could add aquarium salt to some brand new fish in a quarantine tank, and that will also help uh, kill off a, a lot of different kind of parasites and bacteria. Great, great question, Jim. And I saw another super chat just came in $20 from my man, General 51. My man, General, with two questions. Thank you, General. Uh, first, thank you for helping me last week with the situation I had with Aqua Decor. No problem, bro. Um, you're going to love that background too, bro. I can't wait till you get it. Make sure you're posting in the Facebook group. I want to see that. Uh, explain how the different models are with Aqua Decor from the A to the G models. Okay, so they're just different models, bro. Um, the A models tend to be the thicker, wider 3D models. They're, they're much, they're, they're deeper models. I have that. I have an A model in my 75 gallon tank. So if you go check out, um, if you search the channel for Caveman 3D background, my video where I installed it in my 75 gallon tank, matter of fact, General, I think I sent you that link. Uh, but that's an A model. It's a very thick 3D background. The G model are slim backgrounds, which is the one that I have right here, my 210. Let me hook you guys up. See, I wish that I could just click that without having to unclick this. But anyway, that's a G model. Those are slimmer backgrounds. It's a much slimmer style, still very 3D, but they don't pop out as much and they don't take up as much tank space. Those are the G models. And then other models, the other letters they have are just different styles. Some are like a wood, like a wood looking background or just different styles. That's why they have the A through the G or F or E, whatever they have. Second question is how are the Beantown Cichlids doing? Today, the ruby red, the albino ruby red cichlid did pass away today. Today when I got home, no longer with us, but... It was inevitable because I was beginning to believe that there was some eyesight issues. I think the fish might have actually been blind. Um, it, from the beginning, it was never swimming correctly, always bumping into the glass, bumping into decor. It wasn't able to find food when I was feeding them. Um, so I really do believe that the fish was blind anyway, which would mean that it needed to be euthanized regardless. So I did lose that um, albino ruby red today. Let's go back to where I was. Dun, dun, dun. Thank you for that $20, General. I appreciate that, bro. Tariq. Tariq says, but still not enough with the guys in the tank. Sorry, bro. I don't know what you're referring to. What's up, Adam? Thank you for being here, my man. David says, okay, no problem, Tariq. I, you, I love when you guys have your own conversations in the chat. I love it. That's dope. And now I hit the bottom, so it made me jump. There we go. I'm back now. Okay, at least I can find where I was. Fish Legend says, in my African cichlid and Buna tank, I have Mbunas that are breeding at least once a month. That's good. That means you have great water uh, water parameters. Should I be worried about aggression and the female with the eggs? Since you have a female in the tank, yes, you should be worried about aggression because the male that is fertilizing those eggs may not remain the tank boss, may not remain the dominant fish in the tank. Someday, some other fish, when they grow and get bigger, might decide to step up into that role. So that might become an aggression issue. Um, Should I be worried about aggression and the female with the eggs? You may want to separate that female into her own hospital tank. You could either choose to leave her with the eggs in her mouth holding, or you can strip them yourself. Um, But you could also decide to just leave the female there. Uh, She won't eat while she's holding the eggs in her mouth, but that's okay too. Nobody's going to bother her too much. So you got you have plenty of choices there. Just know that if she does eventually, when she does eventually spit those eggs out, if she does so in your main tank with all your other imbuna, the fry are gonna get eaten. So you may want to do something about that. Let me do a time check, guys. Where are we? An hour 15? Okay, we're doing good. We're doing good. Let's go. Oh, this is a long one. Frederick says, What's up, caveman? What's up, Frederick? 
Uh, quick question. I've done everything that is needed to do to keep cichlids. Okay, water changes, rearrange decorations, but my fish always seem stressed out. So I told myself I'm not doing anything to see how they handle that. After two weeks, fish seem in a better state, coloring up and living in harmony. I even stopped testing water. Should I do water changes further apart? Um, your water change schedule is based on your nitrate levels. If your nitrates are reaching around 40 parts per million, they could even go above that as well. That's usually your indication of when you want to do water changes. I don't think that it necessarily means that because you were doing water changes meant that your guys were being aggressive or, or things were going on. Um, rearranging your decorations might have been an issue because you're also rearranging their territories, which can work to your benefit or against your benefit. It could, it could kind of work both ways. You know what I mean? Because if you have an aggressive fish being very territorial, attacking everybody that comes into their territory, moving the decor around will help that. But on the flip side, when you move the core around, now everybody is fighting to own a new piece of territory. You get what I mean? So it could it could go both ways depending on your tank and your fish. So the decorations might have been an issue. Um, I would I would suggest that you don't move decorations around too much and try that for a while. I don't think it's necessarily your water changes or your water change schedule. Um, but it could also be the decorations, like you say, moving them around. Maybe if you are adding new water into your tank and the new water is not or if the new water is different from your current tank water parameters, let's say your temperature fluctuates too much. If you're adding water that's a little bit warmer, I'm not saying you're doing that, but I'm just, as an example, if you add water that's a little bit warmer, that warmer water might get them a little bit more friskier. If the, if the tank temperature raises suddenly, their, their metabolism will raise. They're, they're going to be breathing faster and harder. They may get a little bit more aggressive with all this brand new water. So that might be an issue. Maybe try getting your water parameters to stick to your tank's water parameters, and that might help. Very difficult question to answer, though, Frederick. But I appreciate the question. Let's see. I got some more Super Chats. I'm going to go right to it. 499 from Jonathan. Thank you, Jonathan, for that. Um, another question for you. For my new cycling tank, how often would you recommend cleaning my, my coarse, medium, fine sponges in the Penguin 350? Not very often at all, bro. If your tank is new and cycling, leave your HOB alone. Leave that penguin alone. Don't go in there. Don't uh, mess with the sponges. Don't mess with the biomedia. Leave it alone. Make sure that your tank is cycled before you start even thinking about cleaning that filter out. Let it get dirty, bro. Let it dirty up and muck up. That's going to be beneficial for your tank and for the growth of your beneficial bacteria. Let's keep going. I saw another one. Is this one? Got you. All right. Johnny says, hey, Kev, big fan. My tank is thriving thanks to you and your videos. That's awesome. Have you switched to no purigen and no chemical pure blue? If so, how are the results? Is it okay to go without? Um, I haven't switched to not using anything. I switched to just using purigen. I'm using purigen both in the 210 and in the American Cichlid Tank, the 150. Uh, but you can go without. Chemical media is not necessary at all. It's all a personal preference. If you feel that your water's clarity is as clear clear enough for you and you're happy and content with that, then it's not necessary to spend money on chemical media. You don't have to. But I will tell you that when you do use either or, it will give you a little bit of a kick. It will give you a boost. Um, so it's up to you. It's a personal preference, bro. Right. Uh, Rihanna says, please answer my question. I wish I saw it, Rihanna. I can't really find it. It's I'm jumping around trying to get to everybody's question, Rihanna. If you ask it again, let me scroll at the bottom. Let me see if you're still here. I'm at the bottom, Rihanna. So ask it right now and I'm here. Oh, Matt says, what was your MOS? My MOS was 6312 avionics technician. I worked on the AV8B Harrier jet. That's the one that takes off vertical takeoff and vertical landing. One of the coolest jets out there still to this day, in my opinion. I love it. Uh, 6312. Great question, bro. See a 999 super sticker from my man, Glenn. Thank you for that, Glenn. I wish I could click this and just throw it over here. Let me see if I grab it. Nope. Can't grab it. Can't click it. Can't throw it over here. 
Got to talk to these guys about that. But maybe I could find it. There it is. Thank you, Glenn. I got to find it in the chat. I got to scroll up and down, which then loses my spot. So it is what it is, guys. This is how we're doing it. Five dollars from Milton, a super sticker. Five bucks. But thank you, Milton. I appreciate the five dollars, bro. Appreciate you. Let's go right from there. What does Kemi Pure Blue do? Kemi Pure Blue has activated carbon and some purigen in it. And what the carbon does is it absorbs organic material in your water, um, organic matter that can cause your water to be cloudy. Um, the, the activated carbon also absorbs odors from your tank. It will help um, remove smell. And it's very beneficial in helping your water get crystal clear. That's what Kemi Pro Blue does. Good question. I wish I could be a little bit more technical with it, but that's pretty much what it does. Uh, I guess everyone needs it. I don't know why that came up. Love your vids. Not sure what you mean, Glenn. I think I just answered something like that. KC says, other than Oscars, what other fish can be mixed with haps and peacocks in a 125 tank? I wouldn't say other than Oscars because Oscars aren't technically supposed to be mixed with them. Um, but technically, you should only have African cichlids in there with your peas and haps. Untechnically, on the non-technical side, um, you could try anything. You could try anything. Some things will work. Some things will work and some things won't. I could tell you that, you know, I could tell you that you shouldn't put any Oscars in the tank. And then somebody here in the chat is going to say, my Oscar does great with my African cichlids. To each his own. What works in one guy's tank may not work in another guy's tank. So you can't really, you know, the fish police that are out there that tell people what you can and can't do. To me, that stuff is kind of irrelevant because whatever you do in your tank, if it works for you, it works for you. It may not mean that it's the best environment specifically for whatever fish is in there. Maybe they're not thriving like I like my fish to thrive. But if it's working for you, you know, who am I to say, who is anybody to say, hey, you can't, you shouldn't do that. And you haven't had that, you shouldn't have that fish in that tank. I'm not going to be the guy. I won't do it. Uh, Frederick, okay, thanks. I'll only do water changes when needed. My pleasure, uh, Frederick. Trumpy Padrone says, hello, do you know what I can do? Uh, my beta got over the divider and he got beat up. His fins are all bitten. Um, separate him so he could be on his own. Make sure your water quality is very, very good. And try some Melifex or Pimefex. Those are very good at healing and fin regrowth. If you can't get a hold of those type of med medications, try some aquarium salt. That will help as well. Let's see where we're at. What was your MOS? Got that one. Got these, got these. Whoa, where'd it go? My flower horn is new to us in a new 70-gallon tank. He has been stressed and shy, not really eating, just hiding by the air pump. How long does fish stay like this? It, it, it depends on the fish. Every fish is different, but you just got to be patient with fish, bro, especially brand new fish in a new environment, a new tank, surrounded by a whole bunch of new fish. Just be patient. It could take a while. It could be tomorrow he might come out and be around you, you know? There's really no telling. Just be patient with it. This whole aquarium hobby as a whole in general has to have a lot of patience with everything. You can't rush things with these fish. You can't rush things with your tank. Patience, my people. Patience. What can I put in a 32 and a half gallon tank non-heated? Very vague question, bro. There's, there's thousands of fish that you could put in a 32 gallon tank non-heated. Hello, how to clear cloudy water? The best answer I could give you, the easiest answer I could give you, uh, Raven Knight, is going to be this right here. Boom, boom. Check out my ebook. It has plenty of tips and tactics that if I went into each one with you, that this will be a whole separate live stream. Check out the ebook. It's only 10 bucks. And if you don't get clearer water with that ebook, let me know. I send you 10 bucks right back. And you can keep the book. Nothing to fear, bro. Check it out. 
I'm glad that worked too, by the way. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Kev. Thank you, Five. Fisherholic says, finally catching up to your live stream, bud. Glad you're here. Glad you caught one. I had to ask why you use the same water that the fish came after medication on those new fish video that you got. I thought you said to use new. I assume you're talking about the potassium uh, permanganate medication that I just used. I had to ask why you use the same water that the fish came in after medication. On Okay, I know what you're talking about. So if you caught it, there's a part in the video where I show the black bucket was almost halfway full of water. I had about five gallons of tank water inside that bucket. So while I was pouring the bag water into that bucket, that bag water, by the way, the water in the black bucket, I also had prime in it. So prime is going to detoxify any ammonia that came inside the bag water. So even though I poured the bag water into the bucket, then I dipped the fish and put the fish back into the black bucket, that water was perfectly safe and fine for the fish. That's why I didn't, it, there was no harm in putting them back into the same water with the bag water because I added prime, detoxify any potential ammonia. That's why. Hope that answers your question, Fishaholic. Bodega Wi-Fi. I just saw something. Where did this go? My Oscars are much younger than my African cichlids. Okay. I assume you're saying that you have Oscars in there with your African cichlids and they're younger. Okay. That's cool. So you got Oscars with your African cichlids. Like I said, some people do it. So for some people, it works. So if it works for you, cool. What media shall I use for biofilter, says Assad? Um, you could use a plethora of biomedia, bro. There's so many. In my opinion, I have pot scrubbers in my 210-gallon tank in my two FX6s. Pot scrubbers are working just fine for me. Some people are like, what? Pot scrubbers? Yes, I have a whole video on it. Uh, but you could use pot scrubbers. If you don't feel comfortable with that, you can use ceramic rings. You can use lava rock. You can use matrix. You can use biohome if you really want to spend the money on that. But I don't suggest that. Whole nother story. Python or pump, I use both. I use the pump to take the water out of the tank. I use the python to vacuum my substrate. And then I use the pump to put the water back in. So I use both. Best of both worlds. Michael Knight says, hey, Kev, switch, switch from prime to safe. Dose 150 gallon, eighth of a teaspoon, two fish died. Established tank, 50% water change, temps were good. Any ideas? That crap hurt. I'm sorry for your loss, Michael, um, but I don't blame it on the safe. An eighth of a teaspoon, I, I can't do the calculations right off the top of my head, but that sounds about right. That's even, that's actually a little bit, a quarter teaspoon is for 300 gallons. So what's half of a, is it a quarter? Yeah, it's a quarter. So an eighth of a teaspoon might have been not enough, bro, for your 150-gallon tank. If my math off the top of my head is correct. So, no, actually, you're right, bro. You're right. See, I'm looking like a fool right now. I'm doing math on my head. So half of a quarter is an eighth. So you did dose the right amount. I'm, I'm not going to say it was the safe because there could have been other things going on. Maybe... Your temperature was off. Maybe it was 50% water chain. Temps were good. Oh, temps were good. I can't give you any ideas really to why that fish died. You really never know off the top of your head. You don't know if they had some kind of potential disease going on with them. If they were being bullied in the tank. But I use safe all the time in my 210-gallon tank. And I don't have any issues with safe, bro. I know, I know it's easy to blame like the one thing that you just started using brand new. And blame that, but safe is safe, bro. I wouldn't, <laughs> no pun intended, but I don't think it was the safe. Sorry for your loss, bro. Fish legend, can clown loaches live with African cichlids? Yes, I have. Oh, guess what? I just lost, guys. No more African camera. So I have clown loaches with my Americans, and I have clown loaches with my. African cichlids as well. Uh, let me turn this off. Yes, clown loaches will be fine with your Africans and with Americans. They'll be fine. 
Um, Michael H says, what was the deciding factor switching from two wave makers to one on your 210? The deciding factor was that the wave maker I have on my 210 is super powerful. It was so powerful that it was pulling the substrate from the other side of the tank. It was pulling it and I was getting a bare bottom tank on the other side. So I knew it, it was, if it's powerful enough to pull the substrate on the other side, there's no need for that second wave maker to push stuff on the bottom of the other side. The one wave maker on top, on this side, was pulling everything, including the substrate. So I said, okay, that one is strong enough. So I stuck with one, and it also keeps the tank clean. When I wake up in the morning, I ask myself, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> when I wake up in the morning, there's no poop on my substrate. Everything is super clean. Um, so it's doing its job. So I said, no need for two. What I do have, though, Michael, just for clarification, I do have a second wave maker behind my 3D background. And the reason why I do that is because as poop is getting sucked behind the background, because that's where I have my filters, um, I put a wave maker back there just to keep that poop moving because the flow of water behind the background is minimal to none. But the wave maker back there will help keep that poop moving to find the intakes. Mike says, I Python, is Python okay for 55 gallon water changes? Yeah, absolutely. Um, if you're okay with the speed that the Python takes the water out and puts the water back in, yeah, sure. No problem with that. John reminds everybody to smash the like button. Thank you, John. I saw something from Patrick. Oh, he's answering a question. Coolio, Giolina. Giolina, I think you had asked a question earlier. The vitamins you recommend help with tail regrowth a lot. Yes, they do. Uh, the beta I have was given to me sick. Yes, uh, I believe it's it might be the Vitachem specifically. The, the, the vitamins and minerals that are in that mix does help with color, with health, with fin regrowth. Definitely. Glad to hear that your beta is doing better, Giolina. Patrick says the GPH that the wave maker pushes out. H is the GPH. Oh, at Michael H. The gallons per hour the wave maker pushes out. I guess I'm missing the rest of this conversation. Matt, you the man, Matt. Matt, you are the man. Thank you, bro. Tarek says, my EM, my EM 2215 and Flugel 307 on my 125 gallon tank isn't cutting it. What do you recommend? Um, I don't know how big an Eheim 2215 is. But I would, if it's not cutting it and you know it's not cutting it, swap it out for an FX6, bro. Go with an FX6 and your 307, and I guarantee you, you won't have any problems at all. Depending on how many fish you have, the FX6 alone might be enough. This 150-gallon American tank that you're looking at right now, with that amount of fish, check out Flacco Dos. There he comes, bro. Check him out. I tell you guys, occasionally he'll swim out there when he's ready. And if you notice, nobody bothers him. I like that a lot. Um, but anyway, that 150-gallon tank only has one FX6 on it with that many fish. So depending on how many fish, maybe just change both of those to an FX6 and you'll be fine. Just one might be fine. Patrick dropping the link for everybody. Appreciate that, Patrick. That's the master link right there. Everybody go check it out. I had all this cool stuff and I'm not even using it, guys. You know, like this. Master link's in the description. Oh, by the way, guys, if you guys are not on the text message list and you want to get notified by text message when, I, when I'm going live like this or when I drop a brand new video, Go ahead and text the word CAVEMAN to 855-912-1170 and you'll be opted into the text message list and that's all you need to do. Very cool thing. I love it. All right, let's get that. Let's go back to the comments here. Jonathan says, thank you for your videos. I've learned a lot in the last six months. You're very welcome, Jonathan. Um, I have binged, I think, every single one of your videos. That's awesome, bro. Appreciate that. I have African cichlids and love them, but wish I had more peacocks soon. We're, you're in the same boat as the rest of us, bro. Sometimes we all wish we had more fish and more peacocks and more haps and more everything. But I appreciate you, bro. I'm glad that you're enjoying the channel. Um, thank you for that, Jonathan. Daniela says, thank you for serving us well. Proud of you. Thank you, Daniela. Um, I really appreciate that. It's my pleasure to serve you guys. Um, and, and I tried my best to help. As I know that I'm missing some of you guys' questions. I apologize for that. Um, but it's very hard to stay on track of this. One day, guys, I promise you, 
if I if I get more comfortable with these live streams and you guys keep showing up and you're here, we're we're at it together. I promise I'm gonna get better equipment, maybe some more monitors and screens where I can see everybody's comment and I could keep track, not skip anything. I promise you guys, we're only gonna get better from here. Stick with me, stick with me, guys. Uh, Mike says Tanganyika or Malawi. I choose Malawi every day, all the time, Mike, all the time. Uh, TBE says, what do you feed your African cichlids, especially for their color? I feed North Finn cichlid food. I feed all three formulas, the regular cichlid, the, um, the veggie formula and the krill formula. But I also mix supplements in to their food because all fish food, all pellets, uh, that are all produced fish food have to go through heat and have to go through drying, and that eliminates a lot of nutrients nutrients in all fish food, no matter what brand of food you use. So I like to supplement those nutrients into my food with, get a paper and a pen because I'm about to hit you off, TBE. I supplement with zooplankton, vitality, vitachem, and what was the last one? What did I miss? Garlic guard. Those four things, I add into my pellets. I let them soak for a little bit, and I feed those. The guys go crazy for it. Their colors pop every time that I feed them that. Uh, I try to feed them that every day, but, you know, sometimes I get a little bit lazy, and I'm like, I'm tired today, and I just feed regular. But at least, at minimum, three times a week, I feed them with the supplements, and that helps a lot. I have an entire video on that regimen in detail. Go to search YouTube for caveman fish food. If you search caveman fish food, that video will pop out, pop up. Check that out. Don't check it out now, TBE. Stay here. Stick with me and ask some more questions. I'll help you out. But later on, go find that video. Lonnie Smith says, uh, I have a 125 gallon four hole plumped from the bottom tank. Okay, cool. I want to use it for freshwater fish. My question is, what kind of filter system should I use from the bottom only? I'm not really sure what you mean by, you know, what kind of filter system. If if it's already plumbed and you got holes in the bottom, you might want to try a sump, right? I think a sump will sound good since you're, the tank is already has holes in it and it's plumbed from the bottom. That would be your best bet. Go with a sump, bro. You're already there. You're already halfway, halfway down the pipe. Mike says... Uh, S here, did you buy the pump? You used to do water changes. Oh, where did you buy the pump to do water changes? Um, I bought it on Amazon. And if you use the master link that's in the description below, check out my shop, go to water change equipment, something like that. Navigate, you'll find it. It's in my shop. Check out the link over there. Raheem must have said something funny because somebody, because my man John is laughing at him. Brandon says, thank you guys. We all thank you too, Brandon. Matt Loy says, your videos are always in my feed. Must have watched them all. I hope so, Matt. And if you haven't watched them all, you will. <laughs> if they're in your feed, that's a good thing. That means that you're enjoying the channel. I'm glad you're watching, Matt. Brian says, thank you for keeping it real and interesting, bro. Great info, Kev. Thank you, Brian. I um, appreciate all your feedback. I know I see you commenting a lot. Appreciate you too, Brian. Uh, DC says, what's the best cure for, what's DW? Deworming? Um, for deworming, you could try Metroplex is the best one to start with. That's usually going to attack the most common, uh, internal parasite that fish get. Hexameda. Hexameda is the parasite that I was talking about earlier that I couldn't remember. See, I get brain farts guys, and then I just lose it. But the Hexameda parasite is one of the most common that our fish get. And Metroplex attacks that very well. Um, so that's, I wouldn't say the best cure, but that's like the first one you should start with for deworming. Do I know Spanish? Sí, yo hablo español un poquito, pero no mucho. No me gusta hablar mucho porque nací aquí, pero a veces hablo un poquito. That's the most Spanish you're going to get out of me, bro. <laughs> um, when will you get a new tank? I don't know, bro. First, I need new space. Let me get new space and maybe I'll get a new tank, which is not too far in the future, but let me see where I was at. Where was I at? Check out Goldfish Farms. Uh, Goliath Farms says DeWalt Granger. Helping somebody out, I guess. TBE says I'm a sub, not going nowhere. All right, I appreciate that, TBE. 
Thanks for sticking around. Um, John is answering, and I use polyfill on my HOB and canisters. Yep, you could definitely use polyfill in both of those. Patrick dropping the link. I appreciate that, Patrick. My man Patrick helping you guys out. That is the master link. You can go straight there. It's also in the description below. Delilah says, oh, hey there. Hey, Delilah. Welcome. Neon Clouds, welcome back, my man. I thought you were going to miss the live stream. We've been here for a while. My tank and cichlids, thank you for all your hard work and information. My pleasure, Neon. I'm happy to help and glad that I can help you and your tank. Thanks for coming through, Neon. Peyton says, I love your channel. Thank you, Peyton. Appreciate that, bro. Uh, Goliath Farms again. Corbin says, my glass keeps filming up, filling, filming up, and I have algae growth issue. Algae is usually an issue for a couple of reasons. You might have your lights on too long, Corbin. You might be overfeeding. Um, you might have too many nutrients in your water, too many phosphates, too many silicates. That's why algae grows. You're you're supplying the nutrients that algae wants, and that's why they're growing. So you gotta you got to figure out which one you have in excess, reduce those nutrients, and that'll stop the algae growth. You could also get a bristle nose pleco, is my favorite type of pleco, and they will eat the algae off your glass, off your decor, and take care of that and handle it. That's what I have in my African tank. I have plecos in my American tank as well, and they do most of the work. Also, you could also check out my ebook that, of course, isn't working now. Why wouldn't it work now? I don't know. Let me try that again. Maybe I got to go like this and do this. Nope. Maybe I got to take the, the comment off and do this. There it is. Try my ebook. It, the link is in the description. Go through the master link and you'll find it. That book is going to give you all the tips to help reduce your algae and clarify your water as well. So check that out. That message is still there. That's weird. I thought it would have been gone. Okay. Boom. Let's go back. Where was I? Whoop. I lost it. Got you. Joe E says, how about some advice for ick? Ick can be cured very easily. The number one thing you want to do is raise your temperature in your tank. What happens is that with the temperature being higher, you, you, you speed up the life cycle of the ick and they'll die off quicker. But you also want to uh, vacuum your substrate. Once the ick falls off your fish, vacuum your substrate and get it out of there because if not, it will reattach itself to your ick, to your fish. Um, you could also try aquarium salt. Aquarium salt will dehydrate the ick and make them fall off your fish. Same, same deal though. You got to vacuum your substrate. There is a great, great article in my Facebook group written by my man, Jeff Thompson, that goes into super duper detail of exactly how to handle ick. Go into my Facebook group and check that out. We got a new member. Everybody welcome Esco to the membership. Thank you, Esco. My man, Esco became a member. Appreciate you. This also does not tell me what type of member you just became, Esco. So I apologize for not calling you out the best way that I can. It just says Esco became a YouTube member. See, in my previous software, I would know exactly what kind of member you became. I don't know, guys. Tell you the truth. I don't know how, how much I'm enjoying the lack of options that I had before in the previous live streams. But you guys let me know if you like, you know, seeing these camera angles and stuff. This is basically the new thing. And, and also, I feel it's really cool to throw up you guys' questions on the screen. So you guys, when I'm answering a question, you guys know what I'm talking about. I think that's pretty cool. So that's one of the benefits of here. And the other cool thing that I was supposed to do was uh, stream to the Facebook group and the Facebook page. I really don't know if I am streaming there or not because I'm not getting any comments from Facebook that I know of. So who knows if it's working or not. I'll find out after the stream. Let's go with... Assad, can you mix small pleco with big cichlids? Probably not. Your big cichlids might kill that uh, pleco immediately, like day one, same day. So I wouldn't mix them. I wouldn't put a pleco that's too small with big cichlids, no. My camera froze over there. Hopefully it catches up. Patrick says there's a complete listing of vetted. Uh, okay, the link in the master link. My man Patrick, thank you very much. 
John saying I Esco. Excuse me, guys. Rod says, can you use Epsom salt in your tongue? In your tank? Excuse me. Yes, you can use Epsom salt in your tank, but you want to use Epsom salt for a specific reason, not just not just because. Epsom salt is usually used to alleviate Malawi bloat. If your fish has bloat, Epsom salt will work. Um, also, if your fish has swim bladder, you could give them an Epsom salt bath. That will help as well. But the specific reasons, Rod, why you want to use Epsom salt. It's not just like a, should I use it or not use it? There's reasons to use it. See what else we got here. Patrick is dropping the Facebook group. Definitely go join the Facebook group, guys. It's a great, great group. If you're not in there already, you're missing out. Those guys, everybody in there is super helpful, super friendly, especially to beginners. If you're enjoying the stream, like my man Patrick said, make sure you're hitting that like button and consider joining with your membership. Thank you, Patrick, for letting everybody know. Um, you are, but you don't see comments. I guess you're talking about the Facebook comments. There's a Facebook comment. Facebook user testing the Facebook comments. Thank you, whoever you are, because it just says Facebook user. I think there's a there's a message at the bottom of the of the post on Facebook that says you have to allow, you have to like, you have to give permission. Oh, my other camera died now too. We're down to one camera, guys. This is what it is until I figure out a better way how to keep these cameras on. There's a you have to accept some box check a check a box or something so that it shows your profile information when you do leave a comment. So test that out if you haven't already. But thank you for testing the Facebook comment. At least I know I am streaming on Facebook. That's cool. Good to know. Uh, Chase says, "What size tank is yours?" My African cichlid tank right here is 210 gallons, and the American tank over here is 150 gallons. Milton says, what type of filter do you recommend for a 55-gallon tank, canister filter or hang-on back filter? I'm always going to recommend a canister filter because I feel that they are awesome and they do a great job at filtering your tanks. But you don't have to go canister. If you're not ready for a canister, some people aren't ready for that, and there's no problem going with the HOB. My favorite HOB is the Tidal HOB. I think the Tidal is one of the best um, HOBs out there for many, many reasons. But if I had to choose between the two, I'm going to choose canister. And for a 55-gallon tank, um, the Fluvo 407 is probably a great, great filter, canister filter for you to start with. Very easy to deal with, um, easy to learn, nothing crazy about it. Ali says, what is that gorgeous fish on the right side of your American tank? It's blue, black, pink, purple with long fins. Blue, black, pink, and purple. I don't see that fish. You might be talking about the green terror that gets like a purplish. Is he in the top right now, right above my Oscar? That's a green terror, but he's not really purple. It's just a light kind of flashing on him, giving him that, that color. Let me see what happened with my phone. Oh, it died. My phone died. See, and here's the thing. The phone died because I can't charge it because I have to plug a headphone in so that the volume doesn't come out of the phone, and then we get an echo going on. A lot of things to fix. I told you guys, I warned you guys about the gremlins, so hopefully everybody got that warning, but thank you for sticking with me, guys. So I think that fish you're talking about, Ali, is the green terror, because that's the only one that has a little bit of purple. Um, blue and black, you might be talking about my electric blue Jack Dempsey. That's the little guy on the bottom right there, just above my cell phone. That's an electric blue Jack Dempsey, but he don't have any purple in him. So that might be the two that you're talking about. Faith Sykes says, in your American tank, what's the name of the fish that looks... Okay, Faith asked the same question. Pink, purple, and blue with black. I don't know which fish that is. Again, I think it's the Green Terror or it's the electric blue Jack Dempsey. Pink, purple. It's either one of those two, guys. It's either the green terror, which is on the top of the tank right now, swimming towards that way. Nope, swimming towards that way. I'm backwards. Or it's the electric blue Jack, Jack Dempsey, which is right on the bottom of the tank, right next to my cell phone, if you're looking at it right now. One of those two. Da, da, da. Why did it jump like that? I don't know. What about RO water for African cichlids? You can use RO water. Um, if you've got a problem with your source water and you want to use RO water, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but you're going to have to remineral, remineralize your water. 
because RO water takes all the minerals out of it. And African cichlids need minerals in the water. So you're going to have to use your cichlid salts. You're going to have to use maybe trace. And it's going to be a little more difficult to raise your pH because you don't have any minerals in the water. So make sure you're using an aragonite sand substrate or crushed coral substrate. Um, but you can use our RO water if you want to. It's just going to require a little bit more work. I saw something pop up. Let me see. Am I at the top of the screen? I don't know. All right. Let's keep it going. Where was I? Saw that, saw that, saw that. Here we go. Fish Legend says, uh, I have 25 Mbunas and two peacocks in my 75-gallon and a blood parrot, and my nitrates take less than two weeks to get to 150. Wow. And my cichlids still breed and are healthy, so it's okay if I do water changes every two weeks. Um, 150 is kind of high, right? But I am going to say this. It's also okay. It's not the end of the world if you're reaching 150. Um, my tank tends to reach about 80 parts per million every week. That's why, did that just get clearer when I got closer? Maybe it's the focus. So uh, weekly, my tank gets to 80%. What happened there? I see what's happening. Something's happening with the light and it's getting blurry. Uh, your question is, sorry, let me get back to your question. I'm losing my, my, my train of thought here. Less than two weeks to get to about 150. Is it okay to do water changes every two weeks? If your fish are doing well, bro, and they're still breeding and you don't have any fish death and they're still growing and they're still eating and their colors are looking good and you're happy and you're okay with reaching 150, you might be fine doing it every two weeks. Um, there's some studies out there that say that um, fish can handle a lot more than 150 parts per million of nitrates. There are studies out there that say that, especially adult fish. So I can't tell you that, you know, you, you must do weekly water changes. So take that for, for what it is. Okay, guys. Israel says, can you put a red tail shark in a Buna 75 gallon? You can. Will it survive is another question. I had a red tail shark with my Africans for a long time, maybe even a couple of years. Um, but he eventually got eaten. I think I, I I shared that with you guys on somewhere, either on Facebook or Instagram, but I came home from work one day and half of his body was inside one of these guys' mouth. He got eaten. And he wasn't small either, but he got eaten. Uh, Facebook user, all right. Hi, Kev. I couldn't see the acceptance, so it doesn't show name. Jules. Hey, Jules. Jules is a moderator in the Facebook group, so I'm glad you're here, Jules, and thanks for um, testing out the Facebook group. Uh, I don't know where that... That acceptance thing is, but it's somewhere. I got to look into it. Supposedly, according to this software, there's something you got to click so that it shows who you are. But people are doing it. I see it right here. Uh, Ray from Facebook is on Facebook. All right, Ray. Thank you for commenting and let me know that the Facebook stream is working. That's cool. Brian is also on Facebook. Thank you, Brian. And apparently, they found the link too. I think if you're on the Facebook page watching the stream, you're your profile will show up. But if you're in the Facebook group, there's somewhere that you got to click a box to show who you are if you're in the group. I don't know why it's different. That's just what I got. Another Facebook viewer telling me that I'm live on Facebook. Thank you, whoever you are, Facebook user. <laughs> Appreciate you. What 3D background are you using in that tank? In my American tank, in my African cichlid tank, it is the G model. I don't remember what number it was. I think it's G20. Maybe it was G20 model. Um, but it's aquadecorebackgrounds.com. My voice is starting to go, guys. But check out aquadecorebackgrounds.com. That's where I found that background. You'll love it. Patrick says, I have if you haven't already, please listen to Patrick and hit that like button. I thought I saw a super chat. Did I? I did not. Yes, I did. From my man Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Do did you know that do not touch is the most terrifying this? Terrifying this to read in Brill. Oh, my God. My man Patrick with the dad joke. I know what that means, Patrick. Don't worry about it. That was a great Pat, uh, great dad joke. I'm about to wrap up here in a minute anyway, Patrick. Um, appreciate you. Guys, we're about to hit two hours. Um, my kids are about to get home, and I got to wrap up my studio. So I'm going to scroll to the bottom, guys, 
and just get to any really last minute questions if you got them, throw them out. Um, and I'll try to answer Kev, my man. A beer, cheers. Thank you, my man, John. Appreciate you for being here and helping out. Um, John and Patrick are my two moderators that are helping out, and I appreciate you guys. Um, where's the coffee mug at? Oh, I forgot it, bro. See, my Giants mug is a little smaller than this one. When I really need some coffee, I always go with my bigger mug. But don't worry. I got you, Raheem. Wait for Tuesday when we're in the members only. I'll show it to you. Uh, crazy, crazy 8540. Thanks, bro, for everything. I have a tank full of tiger barbs and black red tail, red tail sharks. I use a lot of sponges and polyfill. And your info keeps my water crystal clear from Charlotte, North Carolina. Pleasure to help you, bro. I appreciate that. Um, glad that I can help you. Crazy 8540 with a shout out. Thank you, bro. Let me scroll to the bottom. Let me see where everybody's at. Um, and Bezel says, appreciate you, Kev. Thanks for taking care of us. Fish lovers, my pleasure. Thank you for being here. Thank all you guys. 150 of you guys are still here in the on the YouTube live stream. I really appreciate you guys. Thank you all for being here. Um, how often to add salt for ick? You want to add your aquarium salt, you know, every maybe every day, every other day. But remember that aquarium salt does not evaporate. Excuse, let me take that back. Not every day. I meant, you know, when you do your water changes, the percentage of water that you replace, that's how much salt you want to add back in because the salt does not leave your tank. The salt does not evaporate with your water. So be careful with that. Do some more research on that. Faith says, thank you, Kev. Enjoyed the live and all the great info. I appreciate you, Faith. Thank you for being here. Okay, last question I'm going to answer here, guys, is right at the bottom, and then we're going to wrap it up. What causes internal parasites in an established tank without adding any new fish? Stress. And when I say stress, it's because internal parasites, excuse me, parasites are always in your tank. They're always in my tank. Your fish immune system are constantly fighting off parasites and bacteria and disease but they're always in your tank when your fish gets stressed out for a variety of different reasons for any reason at all that stress is going to weaken their immune system and when their immune system gets weak that's when those parasites attack and that's how you get internal parasites without adding any new fish think about that keep your fish stress-free and your fish will be disease-free all right, guys, I see there's more, more uh, comments coming in. Semper Fi, Semper Fi, my man, my son graduates Marine Boot Camp next week. Congratulations, Noyes. Congratulations to your son. Make sure he comes on the live stream so I can congratulate him as well. Another Marine in the building. I love it. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. Guys, one last time. Go check out the ebook if you need crystal clear water. Go check out my African Cyclic course if you want the best information on keeping African cichlids. And if you haven't joined the membership yet, go join the membership. Best way to support the channel. We do a bunch of cool stuff on the members only live stream. It goes much better than this. Until then, guys, I'll see you on the next one. Peace. I said bye. And guess what? Now I got to look for my outro video. How lame was that? <laughs> Later, guys.